Welcome aboard the John Boat, and today we are fishing at Pemberton Lake in Pemberton, New Jersey. Uh, this is a fairly large lake for the area, and one of the few that actually has a boat ramp that I can launch my John Boat in. I've been fishing here for probably, I don't know, 30 years or so, and I know the lake very intimately, and I've seen it cycle through all kinds of ups and downs during that time. Uh, right now the lake is going through a harmful algae bloom period and what that is is actually bacteria. Uh, when the lake gets too many nutrients in it from various things like goose poop or fertilizer from nearby lawns and farms uh, it feeds in this bacteria and they bloom. Uh, it creates a very, very bright green slime color to the water. And it's actually harmful to people and especially pets. If you have a pet and you're anywhere near the area, do not let them near this lake. Uh, the bacteria can actually kill them in short order. For people, the bacteria can cause itchiness on the skin uh, and general stomach irritation if you drink it or ingest it somehow. Uh, so aside from that, it doesn't really harm fish, but what it does do is makes fishing difficult. Uh, it causes the water to be that bright green color. The fish don't feed as easily and generally they don't look as healthy as they would before the algae bloom came. Uh, we're seeing this more and more all around New Jersey and it's not really a good thing for our lakes and there's no resolution in sight. There's no cure for it, there's nothing that we can actually do except put up signs that say harmful algae bloom don't go in the water. That's not really helping us. Uh, I don't know what the right answer is but I'm hoping that somebody does come up with a solution for it soon. In the past, the lake had been very, very clear. You could see down about six or seven feet at times, and it was full of aquatic vegetation. Uh, that vegetation is all gone now, and it used to be a place where a number of species could live and hide and feed without any type of, you know, disturbance. Uh, now with all of that gone, the fish are, you know, much less spread out and there are much less numbers of them and different sized classes. Uh, it's not a good thing for the lake and I don't know how to turn that around. Uh, it's just a dying lake all around. Despite all that, you can still catch a fish or two here at Pemberton Lake, uh, but it does take a little bit of, uh, like I said, intimate knowledge of the lake. There are certain places that will still produce fish, and there are still good numbers of certain species. Uh, you'll find that there are a lot of panfish in the lake, but a number of them are undersized, and uh, they are clumped up in small groups rather than everywhere in the lake like they used to be. Uh, the bass fishing is poor to fair on most days, and you really have to work for your bites when you come here. It's a shame because it's a local lake for me and I really enjoyed fishing here when it was healthy and clear. Uh, the other thing that has happened is a trout stocking. Uh, the state began putting trout in the lake not too long ago. Having more areas to go fishing with uh, lots of access like you have at Pemberton here is not a bad thing. Uh, but trout stocking doesn't necessarily help a body of water. In fact, it increases the amount of trash, uh, fishing pressure, 
and general uh, mentality of people keeping fish rather than returning them back to the water. Anytime you have a trout stocking in a lake, it changes the dynamic of the lake where uh, all these fish that have been introduced now need to forage and the resident fish will have to compete against them in order to earn their keep and their meal. Regarding cover in the lake, uh, as I mentioned, there's no longer any grass on the bottom. However, uh, there is a lot of wood cover along the banks in certain areas. There are beaver lodges, as well as some stumps that are underwater that you'll never be able to see now that there's an algae bloom in the lake. Uh, I know where these are. Uh, I also know where there are other items, like a billboard and a former dock or pier structure. Uh, there are also humps of sand that were created when the lake was actually made. And we also have the state in introduced tire reef program, uh, which is basically earth moving tires with a bunch of PVC uh, stuck through it. These are found in some of the deeper areas of the lake. Uh, again, you're not going to be able to see it with the naked eye. It'll barely show up on a fish finder, but these are the areas where most of the larger fish are going to hide and hang out. Uh, and if you can find them, you might be able to catch a couple fish off them. I've done a lot of talking about the lake, so let's talk about fishing at the lake. Uh, with the harmful algae bloom, it's hard for fish to see your presentation. So anytime you can get something that has scent on it or flavor, that's going to help you get a couple more bites. Uh, right now I'm looking at a laydown that extends far into the lake and I'm actually seeing fish all over it. Uh, they're right near the surface, which is kind of surprising in 47 degree water. Uh, it's pretty cold uh, because it's late winter and the water is just warming up as spring approaches. And what you're seeing is me hopping a crappy tube in that laydown. Most of the fish in this laydown appear to be shad. I've never seen shad in the lake before this day, uh, so that's a new one for me, and I'm kind of surprised to see how many of them there are. In fact, they're all over this little cove. Uh, so I switched over to a crappy jig under a bobber and threw it right into this laydown to see what these fish actually are underneath the shad. And first one of the day appears to be a yellow perch. How about it? All right. I think it's about time to do a little panfish punishment here and uh, see how many of them we can catch with the crappy tube. I'm going to toss the crappy tube right back into the lay down under the bobber. And uh, I'm moving it with a couple of slow, quick twitches to just get it moving a little bit and attract their attention, move them away from the log, maybe. And uh, sure enough, the bobber goes down and got a fish on. Is it another perch? Uh, no, this time it's a crappie. And I thought that I was going to make a nice Instagram video here. I pull out my phone. I'm like, oh, OK, got a cool crappie. Let me release it and take a video of me releasing. Guess who forgot to hit record on the phone? I have my camera open. And here I'm putting the crappy back and I'm not even recording. So here I am looking at my phone in a disappointed manner. Let me go try and catch another one. Thinking in my head, no one will ever see it. No one will ever know. Wait, I just put it on YouTube. You can't tell from this angle, but there are actually thousands of fish on this tree. Uh, they're so thick, it looks like you could almost walk on them. And... It appears that they're all different t kinds of fish. They're, I'm spotting chad, perch, crappy, pickerel. Uh, I have no idea what's going to bite out of this thing next. Uh, and it's not really that big of a tree. Here we see one of the larger crappy that I caught. And I'll show it to the camera real close. And I'm showing it to the rest of the world, I guess. I don't even know. Uh, but I decided this time I'm actually going to take a selfie with it.
All right, back you go. Some of you who follow my Facebook and like my Facebook, uh, thank you for that. Uh, may have already seen some of these clips already, and that's because I shared a quick short as I was editing this. Uh, but I added some music to that one and uh, didn't really explain any of the techniques or what I was doing at the lake. Uh, so again, this is another crappy on the crappy tube under the bobber. It's only about a foot and a half, if that, under the bobber. So I'm fishing very, very shallow. This tree is sitting in about four feet of water at most. Uh, and then going right up to the bank uh, and the fish are just stacked underneath of it. There are just so many fish. I can basically call my shot when my bobber lands in the right place. The color of the crappy tool I'm using is called Golden Shiner. Uh, but it's really more of like a green pumpkin with a gold tail. Color I don't think really matters too too much in general, uh, but there are some days where the crappy prefer one over the other, and sometimes they'll even change midday. Uh, so it's good to have a number of different colors to experiment with, and uh, it's also more fun that way. Uh, some days they want bright pink, some days they want orange. Uh, generally, a green pumpkin, a black, a white, a chartreuse, uh, those are going to catch you fish more often than not. And you can use sky condition and water clarity to help you make decisions on the rest. Uh, as you see, it's just back to back to back. I don't really think that the color mattered as much as the presentation. Uh, if I got the bobber and the crappy jig in there close enough to where they were they were going to eat it. Uh, the jig head I'm using is uh, 1 16th ounce, uh, just enough to get it to sink down below the bobber and move a little bit when I'm shaking the bobber back toward me. This action is about to get really ridiculous, so I'm going to speed the next bit of footage up uh, so we can start counting fish. So as you can see, uh, Pemberton Lake isn't all bad. Even though there's a lot going against it, there is still a lot of potential for the lake to make a comeback. There's plenty of fish to be caught, and a good time can be had by people who are fishing here. Uh, so don't let the harmful algae bloom deter you completely, uh, but I hope that we can find a solution for it.